Now then, welcome back to another episode of Avant, playing on the FTOG server once again. I've had such a long week off. I've had like, I had a week's holiday, and there was some stuff that I uh, produced before I went on holiday that you saw. And then we've had hardly any episodes this last week. And that is purely because I'm getting back into it. Getting back into it and, and, uh, Thursday I had to have a bit of sleep because Friday we had an early start. I took the kids to Legoland Windsor. And that was like a 16 hour day, traveling, 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 and then going around the park itself, the theme park of Legoland, and then traveling, traveling, traveling all the way back until I was absolutely exhausted on the Friday. So Thursday, Friday, didn't get any recordings done, didn't get any episodes out. Then Saturday was my wife's birthday. So again, nothing done, nothing doing. Couldn't do even touching my computer because I, uh, well, it was my wife's birthday and she would not approve. And then on the Sunday, well, that's my day of rest. So no videos there either. So now we're starting a fresh week and I'm trying my very, very best to start a, uh, uh, start a schedule once again. Get back into schedule. I've had like two weeks off pretty much. Um, well, I've been busy today and on Sunday building loads more to the spaceship. And I'm about ready to move things on. The warehouse over here uh, has been my base for long enough. And my office in here has been active and machines have been coming and going. I've been adding machines to the power supply and taking them off and doing all sorts of bits and pieces. All of my quarrying has been done and sorted out into here and everything's cool. Everything's working fine. But... But, but, I've had notice from Torgal that the mod that is known as the Storage Network, which is uh, all of these pipes, storage network stuff, and all of this, and all of this stuff that's going on here, and uh, this that was supplying this particular functioning device here, all of this storage network stuff has to be removed because it's coming out of the pack. Now, that's potentially a problem well it's only a problem really because this power supply system over here runs off it and the storage of the goods run off it and the distribution of those goods into the warehouse runs off it but the cables and all those kind of bits and pieces i can change around i can change to ender io or something and i've got a power supply now in the form of a solar panel up there which is powering very well. It's doing all the powering and it's coming down here and I can set it up to go down to that point down there to meet up with that energy conduit to be able to power the sieves and everything from all over this side so that the warehouse can continue to function and continue to uh, passively generate stuff. Now, I've picked spawn chunks, it seems. I, I didn't intentionally pick spawn chunks when I picked up the spot for my base. Spawn is actually just over there, but Spawn Chunks is quite large. We spawned in over on that little uh, hill over there, but the Spawn Chunks themselves are quite large around that area, and my f ability to fly these uh, this grid power system that I've got in solar panels on here uh, functions even when I'm not uh, when I'm online on my own. So these must be Spawn Chunks that the factory warehouse is on. So I haven't got a problem with uh, leaving passively generating things running over here. So long as the materials that uh, are being produced are going to be accessible by everybody, which was always the idea. But I do need to rip out the storage network side of things. Uh, the, the easy storage should be okay, but the storage network needs to come out. So I need to rip all that out uh, before it gets ripped out for me by the update on Wednesday. Uh, and I want to pack all my stuff up because I don't want to be coming over here to produce things for the space the spaceship. I don't want to be coming back over here to use these machines and sort all this out. Uh, I don't want to have all of my stocks and supplies over here in the various storage locations. I need to take this and put it in the spaceship. Now, 
inventory panels are a very cool thing. They've got a crafting grids, they've got storage area for stuff, and they've got um, kind of an AE type uh, interface where everything it's connected to is available within one crafting center inventory panel. Uh, but that has a vat that requires constant production of nutrient solution and the nutrient tank to make it operate. So this is my end game goal for my storage and everything. My uh, entire storage system on the spaceship is going to have these inventory panels sitting wherever they are because they look really cool and they have a really good feature, good function, which is perfect for having stuff going on over there but I need to have something to create the juices for the vat as well to create the nutrient solution I don't plan on doing that this episode this episode I want to gather all of this gear up all of my stocks and supplies and go and sort them out over at the space station uh, the spaceship should I say over in the end and then start using it to produce things that I want. I've also got a big bag of machines and bits and pieces that I've been using as I'm getting going around, like uh, soul binders and metallurgic infusions and stuff and things and bits and pieces, slices and splices and all that. I've got a big bag of tricks in there that I've been uh, hoarding onto. I've also got this storage module that's got all of this st random stuff in that I've been uh, using in crafting various times. I need to get it all organized and sorted out in a new storage warehouse. Okay, so the moving side of things has pretty much been done right now. I got a lot to show you, so let's get cracking on. Um, the, the outside of the ship should probably be the first thing I show you. But I've basically just moved all of my stuff over into this area as a temporary storage. This is all temporary storage stuff until they find other homes throughout the ship. And there's a few bits and pieces that you kind of get a sneak peek at around here that I want to show you as well. Uh, but first up, let's show you the corridor. We've got um, pressure plates from Ender IO painted with clear glass to give me a clear open for iron doors to open into the corridor of the ship so this way goes into the teleporter room and this way goes into my new room which i haven't quite finished but we're going to finish today and this goes into the the, the bridge um i struggled for a long time figuring out the design for it and i'm still not 100 percent sure i'm happy with it but it's kind of in keeping with the overall ship feel and plan the overall ship design and layout is similar to this all the way through now, so that's good. And then we've got the main corridor from one airlock to the other airlock. Thank you very much, all of you that pointed out airlock in the comments last time. Uh, so yeah, this is the entrance, and there'll be an airlock here, and then into the main corridor across the ship, which looks very similar, but isn't quite, e isn't quite exactly the same as the corridor leading to the bridge. Just a few similarities, a similar few blocks being used and the like. And then there is the teleporter room, as you've already seen from last episode. Okay, out this way, I've extended the back end of the ship a lot. As you can see, I've gone from the, uh, the white of the alabaster and started working out, out, out with clay and some more of the purple blocks. Uh, it looks okay from the outside. There's still a lot of finishing touches to do around and about. But from the underside, we're starting to get that shape. It's still got the big back end, the big engines to put on the back. Uh, it's kind of staying even and straight. And I've got detail work to do on the outside. But for now, it is still looking pretty good. It is looking pretty good. I like it. Uh, I added in the front window as well. I only put the front window in because I didn't want uh, to be open to the air. But I'm not planning on keeping a window at the front there. I'm planning on putting something else. More of a console thing going on. Uh, and I've lit the place with torches right now. I started working through with um, sea lanterns. And I started doing things like putting carpet down. Just to try and avoid having the spawns of the mobs. But I'm kind of figuring out now where 
I want the line to be drawn between the two. Whether or not this is something that I want, maybe I'll change this around a little bit. Maybe maybe these would go back one. Uh, I've actually got them on here. Uh, yeah, sea lanterns on here. Uh, maybe they will go back one and be kind of just inside, underneath the lip. They should still give a little glow out, but whether or not they'll stop the spawns is a different thing entirely. Uh, we'll decide that at a later date. Put that away. I, this this handy bag is so good because you get the extra space, and I've got all these different memory cards for stuff. So all my building supplies are all in one place, which is really awesome. Uh, the other option there, of course, is using the end rods as well. Using the end rods to uh, light the place up. But at the minute, I've just torched the place. I'm going to work on that later. I've also installed my uh, my solar array and put a chunk loader on here. I was finding uh, a problem with this storage, the remote storage. Because the remote storage wasn't chunk loaded, I couldn't access it from wherever I was. Yeah. And also when I came back, it was not connecting. It was emptying out of power and wasn't taking power directly. Even though it was next to the block, it wasn't taking power directly when a chunk loaded that it was in. So it's got to stay chunk loaded. So I made a chunk loader from chicken chunks and uh, the power now goes down from there into a bank down here. This is just one of many solar arrays that I plan on putting on the top to bring power down into the ship. Uh, but this one is now full on uh, 27 million, ready for processing in the engineering section. So I've moved all my stuff over and I've started figuring out where the engineering side of things is going to go. And I'm now going to hook it all up. So I thought I'd bring you back and have a look around. Now this is engineering. Uh, it took me a little while to figure out how to use the space. If I go up a bit, the, we've got the outer wall of the ship around here. We've got the flat wall of the uh, bridge here. And then we've got the flat wall of the um, corridor with doorways sticking out of it in various different points as well. And I also wanted to bring power down from above. So I've got this uh, power system that I've just showed you here coming straight down in here like this and I wanted all my machines and stuff to be in uh, in kind of an ordered system so I've come up with this this part here is symmetrical with a three by two section for machines here a long bank for machines there and a two by two section of machines there it looks okay it's not quite on center I've done what I can to make it look as good as I can and I'm quite pleased with the overall product. The overall setup is good. I might want to bring this out one more block just to some, make it even more symmetrical. But I was kind of working off the floor. The floor needed a little bit more symmetry and I was working off uh, a four on this side and a five on this side and a four on this side. And yeah, so it's kind of worked out this way around. For now, it's okay. I may just move this one pillar in one and extend it out to make a 3x3 three three in the future. Just so it's lined up a little bit better with the ceiling lighting. Uh, but for now, we've got to figure out doing all the bits and pieces. And I've got everything set up here that I think I'm going to need. So first up, we're going to start by doing a few cables and bits and pieces. Uh, draw controller, yep. I want to do a draw controller as well because I want to feed in from the back end of the ship so my wiring to start off with is items will travel across here from the processing and sorting and bits and pieces out there items will travel in to these sections I'm gonna bring the items into potentially storage over here as well and all that kind of stuff but for starters I just need to get this bit ready so I want to bring this power down and across I think I'm actually going to do it slightly different to that I think I'm going to go with um, bringing the machines in one so that it's lined up with this section here like that and then I'll have six machines all needing power from there like that a little loop around 
and then bring it out this way and then these machines or sections will be in line with it I probably will just use it for storage for now and then once I've uh, moved things around and changed my storage system I will uh, change it fully later on uh, but for right now let's just get this power supply coming across here there we go and well let's do a well let's do it like that because that's probably about right there we go so in here I've got some machines in here I got some machines and in here I'm going to use storage for now but then I will put machines in later I probably want to upgrade the cabling later on as well so that the uh, maximum power cables are coming through but for right now we're sorted and then I'll put uh, storage along here for now so that needs to be like that and we'll have this item cable coming this way I'll change that to input only so that it inserts into the storage drawer controller and only if possible and I will also connect it up to the remote awareness upgrade so that I can draw items from it in the future if I, pre uh, if I decide to go down that route which I probably will because well what I said earlier in this episode uh, and bring that all the way up to there connecting it all up to the system so items could come in go straight through and out that back way now I need to disconnect it from any machines I put here I think I've got six um, six Ender IO machines and or maybe five Ender IO machines sag mill yeah and painting machine yeah I've got five of those and I've got three of mechanisms machines at the minute so I'm gonna put a modular storage in with each so this bank of four over here can be the mechanism stuff if I can get it out of my inventory instead of putting it all back into my inventory let's go like this I don't know which order in particular I want it at the minute so I'll just put it in any order at the minute just put those in like that uh, put the storage at that end I know the storage doesn't need power but for right now that'll do so that's all set up in there I may change these to steps or yes yeah, stairs I think to round it a little bit towards the consoles but for right now I'm just getting the layout so I can start working so I can get back to working on making stuff and doing things and then this one um, I think with this one I'm gonna put the modular storage right in the middle and then machines that create things and do things like the sag mill and that um, sag mill and alloy smelter I can put them to go into the machine itself into the storage should I say so let's put uh, that sag mill on top there the alloy smelter on there and let's put the slice and spice in there and then the painting machine and the soul binder well, we can have the soul binder up there out the way and the painting machine in there there we go so that's nice and neat and tidy the th machines that I've currently needed to use go in here I've got places for more machines as we go I've started putting the um, extra utilities stuff over here so extra utilities machines and things over here so that we've got some adequate storage for extra utilities stuff I'll probably put a modular storage system in here somewhere as well and I got a little place behind here just for sorting it all out because the power comes in there I could still bring a cable in this way and put some power in but extra utilities has a grid power so as so long as my grid power is all connected then that should be okay in there as its own sort of unique little system um, as for the rest of it in here I was thinking about how to store the things uh, we're gonna have a modular storage here as well I think yep uh, and I will get round to removing all of the uh, items here so that they do not try and transfer items in and out of these machines because that's not what I want it for I want to manually use these machines any automated machines will be further down automated production of things this is engineering this is where I come and I manually move things around I also wanted the modular crafting so that I could put some uh, storage in here with its own like crafting bench is that got any contents already yeah ender IO contents there we go so all of my ender IO stuff is in here 
ready for me to come along and process Ender IO things when I need to process Ender IO things. And I can also do things like um, pulsating iron. No, no, no it's a conductive binder. Let's go with that. And some binding conduit. Or conduit binder. And then save the recipes in here as well. So it's quickly and easily available for me to just make some more energy cables or make some more of whatever it is that I'm making at the time the Zender IO just be able to make products very quickly and easily by having recorded the recipes that I've used the most uh, but the rest of it's all for the processing of things which I think is cool and then on this side we'll put this in and this should be yeah all the mechanism bits and pieces that I've picked up so far so again when I'm making mechanism stuff I've got the three main machines here and a storage which has got a crafting bench and the ability to store some common recipes as well. Um, until I've got more machines coming in, more machines, potentially more RF crafters and uh, bits and pieces from RF tools, maybe some other bits from Quantum Flux and other mods that are going to need some space in the engineering, they will all go in here. But for right now, I thought about just using some compacting drawers. Uh, because the compacting drawers are good for storing the metals to get the ingots and stuff out. Uh, as we found in the Infinity Mod Pack a little while ago, that's a pretty good way of storing metals. Uh, and I've got my ingots disc over here all sorted out into this one. So I'll take my ingots out of there and I bring them over into this place. And that allows me then storage like there there we go this is currently a remote storage module i want to change that around a little bit later on um but i don't know i don't know if i'll need to or what but i'll i'll mess around with it later and then i can take my iron out of here and stick all the iron into this one and it'll give me blocks nuggets or ingots when i want it uh all the copper can be done the same copper uh, well, actually, I should probably put the copper somewhere somewhere closer to this way. There we go. Copper doesn't have any nuggets by the looks of it, but still, we can put all those in there. Yep, there we go. And gold, we can put the gold in here, like so. There we go. And do the rest as well. So I can uh, basically put all of the ingots into storage along here. Uh, but along the bottom there, I've also picked out these framed drawers. And these framed drawers, I've been experimenting a little bit to try and get the same sort of style so that it's all fairly in keeping. It all has pretty much the same look about it. And we've got the workbench set up in here with some more set up. So you can see it's the hardened stone over the main section and then the basalt from chisel. I found the basalt the other basalt from environmental tech was a little bit too dark so not doing that one uh but this should be good i think it was three maybe it was four uh no it was three that's good there we go and then i can have some materials that i use regularly for crafting recipes and stuff in here all set up like this um yeah what i'm gonna put in here i don't know yet but that is the general gist of how the place is gonna look and and I've lost all power for some reason. I've lost... Oh, no, I've got the ability to fly. Must have just been day going to night or something. So, yeah, I've got some more work to do. I've got some more finishing touches. But now I can start expanding out this way and sending items forwards into storage. I need to figure out a way of getting, like, uh, zombie flesh or meat and nether wart and all that kind of stuff in to power some of the Ender I.O. stuff that we've been uh, using so far, like um, the inventory panel needs to have supply of power from the vat and all that kind of stuff. That's all going to happen soon enough. Uh, but for right now, at least I can get on with what I need to do around the place because I've got a workstation. I've got engineering. Still need to finish off the ceiling. I may change it around a little bit, may move the blocks around a little bit. Uh, would reduce that down by one but that's not a big deal um, I really want machines to go there I don't want storage to go there I want storage to go through there probably so I'll have 
crafting on the bridge. This is where I'll do all my crafting and sorting and getting things ready. Uh, hopefully all linked to the other places. And in here will be production so I can produce all the items that I need from all the various machines. I think I'm going to put a window in here. I was originally thinking of using the multi-block technology to bring it out into here. But I quite like passing it as if it's got its own room. And I pass through and I can see through the window uh, how much power I've got and what the input output is and all that kind of stuff. I want to, uh, again, make this become a bit higher so that we've got more storage. I want to work on some bigger, better things from environmental tech. And all of that begins now because I've got everything I need over here to be able to start producing mass amounts of cool stuff. But I reckon that's about all I've got time for this episode. So uh, thank you all very, very much for watching another Avant 3 episode on the FTOG server. I will see you very soon for some more.